So the intermediate maths challenge is happening this week and in this video we're going to talk about how you get gold, silver and bronze certificates in that challenge both in terms of the scores you need and how to prepare and here's the paper from last year you can see on the screen we'll have a look through the instructions and uh, how you get points in this challenge uh, and also think about how to prepare. So if you are preparing for this challenge you can actually practice this paper uh, in a totally free online course uh, that I've made. I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below, you can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So let's look through the instructions on this paper and see what we can learn from it. So don't open the paper until you're told to do so. Of course, you've got 60 minutes uh, to do this challenge and nothing can be entered uh, after that time is over. So you've got to make sure you filled in everything you need to before the challenge is finished. Uh, you can't use squared paper calculators or any measurement instruments in these challenges that's not something people always pay attention to but you're not actually allowed to have rulers or squared paper that you could use as a ruler in this challenge you're meant to be working out everything here from scratch mathematically and not doing measurements although a lot of the diagrams in the challenge are not to scale anyway so the measurements wouldn't necessarily be that useful uh, but sometimes you could draw your own diagram and measure it uh, because it's multiple choice in particular uh, maybe you could rule answers out so they're trying to avoid you doing that here Okay, uh, yeah, use a pencil to mark the answers. So it says don't expect to finish the whole paper in the time allowed here. That's a really important point. Uh, most people here will not do all 25 questions. You might have a go at 15 or 20 of them and then think about some of the others later. Um, and again, it kind of depends what year you're sitting this in, how much you might expect to get through. Unlike the other challenges, this is over three different school year groups. Here's 9, 10, 11 in England and equivalent year groups. Uh, elsewhere and so there is a big difference in terms of people's mathematical backgrounds in year 9 uh, and year 11 and as we'll see the scoring for the later rounds uh, does reflect that as well but we'll come on to that later. Um, so don't expect to finish the whole paper in the time allowed and it says in number 8 here as well the questions are designed to challenge you to think and not to guess so they're meant to be problems that we're really working out mathematically enjoying the puzzle and the problem solving as much as trying to uh, get to a really high score but it is also a competition so we should think about how to maximize um, our scores as well. Um, it says the paper's about solving interesting problems not about lucky guessing. Um, but let's have a look at the scoring rules and see if we uh, agree with that. So it says five marks are awarded for each correct answer to questions 1 to 15 uh, and six are awarded for 16 to 25 but if you get something wrong in 16 to 20 you lose a mark and if you get something wrong in 21 to 25 you lose two marks. Now if you leave the question blank you don't lose any marks right so um, 16 to 25 you'll just score zero without losing any marks if you leave them blank it's only if you guess and get it wrong that you lose the marks. But for questions 1 to 15 there's no penalty at all uh, for guessing and getting it wrong so for questions 1 to 15 although you should work out the answer if you can first if you don't have an answer for those you definitely should guess you might get some uh, free marks just by chance. In questions 16 to 20 uh, you would gain um, six marks for getting it right and you lose one if you get it wrong. So if you think about it, if you do guess those questions the odds are slightly uh, in your favour, right? Uh, on average uh, you will get six marks one in five times uh, because there's five options so six divided by five is 1.2 so you kind of gain 1.2 from your guess uh, when you get it uh, right um, and four out of five times we uh, lose uh, one mark which is only worth minus 0 0.8 so we're going to be gaining 0 0.4 marks on average by guessing 16 to 20 as well um, but from 21 to 25 we lose two marks so actually we lose uh, two uh, times uh, four fifths uh, every time we uh, for, for the ones we guess and get wrong so we're losing 1.6 marks on average um, and only still only gaining 1.2 for the ones that we get right if that makes sense uh, so you can work it out as a, an expected value calculation if you want but basically the takeaway here is definitely uh, guess 1 to 15 guessing 16 to 20 is a little bit of a gamble but it's slightly a gamble in your favor guessing 21 to 25 is also still a gamble but it's a gamble that goes against you so having said all of that how many questions do you actually need to get right to get the different certificate grade boundaries well 
Um, if you go over to the Mathsaurus uh, website here, um, you can see here a link to that free course again, um, but if you go to the UKMT section and the Intermediate Maths Challenge, you can see that um, as well as links to the courses here, I've got some descriptions of how they award the uh, grade boundaries. So the exact grade boundaries vary from year to year, but 40% of people who enter will get a certificate and it'll be in the ratio of one to two to three uh, for gold to silver to bronze. So overall, what does that mean? Uh, that means one sixth of the 40%, uh, two sixths of the 40%, three sixths of the 40%, get gold, silver and bronze, and that equates to roughly 7%, 13% and 20% of entrants getting the boundaries. But it does mean that the grade boundaries vary slightly, slightly from year to year depending on who takes the papers and how hard those papers are. So you can see all the grade boundaries from previous years uh, here in this table. So what do we need for a bronze certificate? Well, um, we can see uh, it's gone down as low as 37 here up to sort of 55 or 60. So generally um, about uh, 10 or 12 uh, correct answers look like they'll get you a bronze. Um, to get up to silver, uh, 68, 72, 55, it can vary. You know, 11 answers here in 2019 would have got you a silver, um, whereas uh, 68 here corresponds to 14, 14 times 5 is 70. So 14 of those 1 to 15 uh, would get you silver. Of course, if you get 16 to 25 right instead of 1 to 15, they're worth 6, so maybe you don't have to answer quite as many, but most people will do 1 to 15 first because they're quite a lot easier. Um, and for the gold boundary, again, sometimes just doing questions 1 to 15, 5 times 15 is 75, so you can get 75 marks without even looking at question 16 onwards in a couple of years here, that would even get you a gold certificate. But in the last couple of years here, you would have needed to have gone on and do and done a few of the later questions as well. So if you get 75 from 1 to 15, uh, you know, in 2020 would have still needed another 14 marks there, so would have needed three extra marks. So, you know, another uh, you know, 18 questions there, and that's kind of the highest it's been. Sometimes it's been, you know, way down here at, you know, 62 or 64, depending on the year. So um, actually going for gold in the Intermediate Maths Challenge isn't necessarily quite as hard as it looks from the papers. You don't have to get all of the answers right by any means. Um, doing a solid attempt at 1 to 15 and then getting a few of the answers from 16 to 20 right um, is really uh, enough. Now you might also know there are follow-on rounds to the Intermediate Maths Challenge and if you click uh, here you can go to another page and we can see the qualification boundaries for the uh, follow-on rounds. Now it's a bit complicated for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, uh, there are different follow-on rounds depending on which year group you're in. So for the actual certificates themselves, doesn't matter if you're in year 9, 10 or 11 or equivalent year groups um, in other countries, but uh, for the follow-on rounds they distinguish it right? because uh, in those follow-on rounds, they are happy to use a bit more maths if you're in year 10 or 11, say. So there's a kangaroo round and an Olympiad round, depending on uh, how well you do. The kangaroo is slightly easier to qualify for than the Olympiad. If you're in year 9 or below, um, you would enter the grey kangaroo, and years 10 and 11 would go on to do the pink kangaroo. And there are three different Olympiad rounds, the Cayley, Hamilton and McLaurin, are designed for people in year 9, year 10 um, and year 11. Or equivalent year groups elsewhere. Okay, and again, uh, so to qualify for those, um, there are different boundaries. So uh, you can look at this table in more detail, but let's just look at last year's qualification boundaries, right? So uh, actually, the grey kangaroo boundary, that's the one for year nine students, you just had to get a silver. So this is where they do distinguish between year nine, year 10, and year 11. So, you know, uh, okay, it might just be that if you're in year nine, you're not going to get a, a gold certificate until uh, later on. But they realise it's harder for you, so to qualify for the follow-on round, you know, they say a silver is very is enough. So actually, you know, getting any certificate in year nine is a very very good uh, result, and um, getting a silver is enough to qualify for the follow-on round. But to qualify for the pink kangaroo, you had to get to the gold certificate boundary. They don't always match up with the certificate boundaries, although I think they've been doing that more often in recent years. But uh, the uh, the qualification boundary then is just higher if you're in years ten or eleven. And similarly, for the different Olympiad rounds, um, it, depending on whether you're in year 9, 10 or 11, it's harder to qualify. So if you're in year 9 to get into the Olympiad, it's 100, in year 10 it's 110, and in year 11 it's 118, and then you also do different papers when you get onto those. And okay, in other years it's been lower, you know, 2019 here, you know, it was only 91, 99, 106, say, um, but uh, so, you know, the 
the, the scores here just depend on how many people do that well in the paper and how hard that paper is. So they, it's more about how many people uh, are going to be qualifying for those rounds than the exact scores. So if you're really interested in that, you can dive into previous year's uh, scores here uh, on the website and have a look at that. Um, but I just wanted to mention that was there. Of course, you know, getting certificates and qualifying for these extra rounds is something that a lot of you will uh, really care about, I know. But the main thing for these maths challenges is just to enjoy the problems, to learn a bit of maths. And if you approach it in that spirit, actually, I think you're more likely uh, to get uh, these uh, qualification rounds. Qualifying for the Olympiad is very, very difficult, of course. Um, and uh, at that point, you, know, you really do need to get quite a lot of the paper right. I mean, what's the maximum score for the IMC? Where you can get 75 marks from 1 to 15, so that's uh, 5 marks for 15 questions. And then there's 10 questions where you can get 6 marks, so that's an extra 60. 75 plus 60 is 135. So, you know, to qualify for uh, the Olympiad in Year 11, you do need to be getting quite close to getting all of that right. Okay, that's enough. Uh, for this video. hope that's been useful. Um, if you're taking the uh, Intermediate Maths Challenge this week, don't forget to have a look at that free preparation course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, and if you really want to prepare the Go for Gold uh, upgrade is available as well. Um, but you can also have a look at more past papers on the UKMT's uh, website. Uh, you know, just practicing a paper or two uh, ahead of the challenge is really all you need to get into the, um, the right state of mind to do the challenge and to give yourself a chance of doing well. And you know, if you really want to spend more time preparing, if this is something that really uh, means a lot to you, then you can uh, try to uh, do more preparation in those uh, extra courses as well. So good luck to everyone taking that challenge this week, and I will see you soon. I'll put a video out when the uh, results come out probably, so uh, watch out for that sometime soon.